No, no. 36%? Do y'all think having fun is worth 36% of your time? Because that's what this movie is. Fun, period. Tonight. Cut that, cut it. What did the audience say? 46%? Come on! Just when you think you can count on the common man, the 2016 election happens. Wait, no. Just when you think you can count on the common man, you see a score like this. Sit down and pay attention. Last Action Hero is an early 90s favorite of mine. I think this score is a bunch of rubber baby buggy bumpers. That's from Last Action Hero. Did you laugh? Well, we're off to a good start. Before I go into why I think this tomato meter score is <laughs> bullshit, let me explain what the whole movie is about for the uninitiated. But we are initiated. No, Bane, you're not initiated. Last Action Hero is about this kid who's friends with this old guy, who's a projectionist in a rundown New York City movie theater. The old man gives the kid a magic ticket that was given to him by Harry Houdini. The ticket opens a portal into the movie world. Take that, Spideyverse. And the kid is magically transported into his favorite movie franchise, Jack Slater, starring Arnold Schwarzenegger. However, once he's in the film, it's not Arnold Schwarzenegger, it truly is Jack Slater. And in classic buddy cop fashion, they become partners. I'm Jack Slater's new partner. Jack and I will be working together for the duration of the film. Then they go on a mission to try to stop, in my opinion, arguably one of the best bad guys in movie history. Yeah, I said it, and we'll get into why later. But the bad guy gets a hold of the magic ticket, makes his way into our world, the real world, and the kid and Jack Slater have to go into the real world to go stop him from bringing bad guys from the movie world into our world, because as he puts it, In this world, the bad guys can win. Ugh. Depressing. And also, take that Lego Batman movie, done been thought of. Now that you know what it's about, I can shower the movie with appreciation. And yes, there will be spoilers ahead, but I have a sneaking suspicion that nobody cares if I spoil a movie from 1993 that only got a 36% on Rotten Tomatoes. So, shall we begin? First, it's self-aware, it's action-packed, and it's goofy as hell. I mean, a minute and 40 seconds in, Arnold Schwarzenegger enters the film like this. walking on top of the cars. That was rhetorical. It's because it sets the tone for the whole movie. It says, I'm gonna be ridiculous and I'm gonna make fun of all the action movies you've ever loved. It's meta and it loves it and I love that it loves being meta. Danny, the kid, tries multiple times to prove to Jack Slater that they are in an action movie. I can prove this is a movie. Shh. Who the hell are you, kid? Look out there, this is a cartoon cat. He's supposed to be back on duty. He was only suspended for a month. Now shut up. Listen to what I'm saying. An animated cat just walked into the squad room. Hello? He'll do it again tomorrow, so what's your point? You know what, right? If this was a real world, I mean, they wouldn't make me your partner. They'd assign me to a social worker. Just say this one word. This is another one of your movie proofs? Maybe. Kid, I don't want to say it. Say what? You can't. You can't possibly say it. Because this movie is PG-13. Admit it. Every time he does it, it tickles my funny bone. Especially when Arnold Schwarzenegger thinks that he's smarter. Wait, where are you going? I'll be back. Ha! You did not gonna say that, did you? That's what you always say. I do? Then it's the movie references. This movie is chock full of them. I mean, step aside, Ready Player One. What's not possible? He's fantastic. This is his best performance ever. Hey, but that was you. You were in that movie. He killed Mozart. In a movie? Amadeus, he won eight Oscars. Not to mention, the cameos are incredible in this movie. I 
love when movies reference other movies. Not only because it feels like an inside joke and I'm on the inside. It feels like I have friends, am I right? I like that it kind of takes the movie out of the vacuum that is a movie in itself. Movies happen at, with certain rules and we have to follow these rules. The bad guy's gonna do this and the good guy's gonna do that. This movie breaks a lot of the rules that we take seriously way too often and that allows the viewer to have some fun. We don't know who's gonna show up. We don't know what's gonna happen. I think that's why I and I think some people like cinematic universes. We're not just watching one superhero take down a villain because we know that story. Now I know that that is an exaggeration of what Last Action Hero is doing. But this idea that there is a movie world where all these characters are hanging out and not just one hero, one villain, and I think that's what makes this movie so cool. I think that kind of makes sense. Number two, I would say the bad guys in this movie are actually scary. I mean, first off, look at this guy. Shout out to the makeup department for the number they did on Tom Noonan. And that axe he's got is super dope. It's got those sweet little tails on the end of it, and Tom Noonan straight up kills Jack Slater's kid. Yeah, whoa, set the stage, brother. Then we got Charles Dance. First of all, great name. Did you know that was his name? Motherfucker's last name is Dance? Dope as hell. He's got different eyes for different moments. I love every one of them. It's great, isn't it? One eye turns into a bomb. Don't touch! Oh, man! You walking around with a bomb in your eye? That's dangerous. Foreshadowing. Here's what makes him scary. He's a smart bad guy. And he's funny. Like when he gets into the real world and he realizes you can kill people and get away with it. Hello? I've just shot somebody. I did it on purpose. I said... I have murdered a man, and I want to confess. Hey, shut up down there! Or this part when he's giving the bad guy monologue at the end, and he keeps shooting at Jack Slater, and he keeps shooting at Danny, and you're like, oh my god, stop talking. You really are just a movie bad guy. You would never make it in the real world. And then he does this. Gee, did you make a movie mistake? You forgot to reload the damn gun. No, Jack. I just left one chamber empty. Jack Slater just got shot in the chest. That is cold blooded. So we have an action movie made for the movie fan, punctuated by moments of Arnold Schwarzenegger just hamming it up, being a delight, and bad guys to boot. That's a winning combination. What more could you want? Well, since you asked. I want the movie to be shorter. And sometimes these action sequences just go on and on, and I'm like, okay, we get it. It's an action movie. But I thought we were making fun of this, not marinating in it. Which is the second problem with an otherwise enjoyable ride. The problem with LAH, oh yeah, I initialized it, is that the serious parts get too serious. I blame both the writer, Zach Penn, and the director, John McTiernan. Zach, you may know from Boom and Boom, and John McTiernan, you may know from boom, 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 boom. With a little help from Shane Black, boom. Now I'm not saying these gents are experts, but they all have their action chops. So you can't blame them when they get all jacked up when an action sequence comes. Anyway, if you can handle some tonal shifts and you got two hours to kill, then definitely watch it. Enjoy some Arnold Schwarzenegger and enjoy making fun of movie rules that we take seriously way too often. I'm Mike Lockyer and I don't know why I'm saying my name, but it felt natural and I'm signing off. That's how you review a movie that's not trending, not popular, and won't get you any followers.